Morning, everybody. How y'all doing? How many people here were at the uh, tutorials yesterday? Excellent. Makes it nice and easy for the reg people at back. Um, we're thrilled that you're here. We're really excited about the, uh, the next couple of days. Uh, this is a topic that's been uh, long, um, long eagerly awaited by, by all of us at O'Reilly and elsewhere. I think it's really something whose time has come. Uh, a couple of housekeeping notes, and then I'm going to call up uh, Ed Dumble. Uh, first of all, um, as many of you know, the hashtag for this event is StratAConf. Um, but I was told by all of the semantic processors that it's StratAConf because we're generating a ton of meta crap with StratConf and Strata and so on. So in order to make all their algorithms work, they'd really like it if you'd use StratAConf as the hashtag. Um, clearly something we need to work on algorithmically. A um, couple other things. Uh, we'd love it if you guys would rate today's sessions, all the content you're seeing. Uh, we spend a lot of time uh, looking at that feedback. We try to deal with it as quickly as possible. Uh, but because this is the first of the events that we're doing like this uh, and the first strata uh, thing to happen, we're really, really interested in tuning it. We don't know exactly what works and what doesn't. So we really want to hear from you um, what you think about the event, what's working and what's not. Uh, if you go to the conference website, uh, you'll find a box for rating uh, things in the upper right corner of any session detail page. Uh, scroll down to the bottom, leave feedback, ask questions. That stuff is read by us. It's read by the people that run the sessions. It's how we make sure that the next event is even more awesome. Some of you may be aware that we're live streaming today's keynotes. Uh, we were thrilled that this conference got the attention it did. Um, and uh, many people who simply couldn't buy tickets are uh, watching it online. So if you're online, we're really excited that you're here. Um, and uh, we hope you enjoy the event uh, streamed live as well. Um, great that we're able to do that. And we'd like to acknowledge uh, some of the people that made this show possible, uh, especially those that, that you know, did it when we weren't really sure what this was going to be. They had a lot of faith in the topic. Uh, they had a faith in, in how the thing was going to come together. So our premium diamond sponsor is Thomson Reuters. Uh, our diamond sponsors are EMC, Enterprise DB, and Microsoft. Um, and we really love the fact that they put some, uh, some support behind this. Uh, their participation is really appreciated. And uh, we're hoping this is going to be a fantastic event for them as well as us. Without further ado, I would like to call up Conference Chair Ed Dumble to join me up here. Good morning, sir. Thanks, Asta. Good morning. So let me bring up this guy. I'll tell you who he is in a second. but. Um, I wanted to welcome you on behalf of O'Reilly to Strata. In a sense, this conference needs no announcing. It kind of announced itself over the last few days. And uh, I've really been so happy and excited at all the, the chatter and the, the tweets and engagement from everyone. So thank you. What I wanted to do before we got underway was just give a little bit of framing, a little bit of a story as to why we're here. So this guy, William Smith, has the nickname Strata. And uh, he lived in the 18th century in England. And he gained the nickname Strata because he is the inventor of the stratified geological map. He looked at the fossil record. He figured out that rocks were laid down in the same order. And he went around and he drew a map. He drew a map, which is coming up, of the United Kingdom, or Britain, showing the various layers of natural resources. At the same time, the Industrial Revolution was happening, um, and what he did really fueled that fire. He probably didn't know really what the context of everything he was doing, though he knew what he was doing was important. He actually found out uh, kind of the hard way because his work was immediately plagiarized and stolen and he himself uh, was a very poor man and unrecognized for a lot of his life. But the point was that the Industrial Revolution was a time of great change where what it meant to be alive, what it meant to be a part of society, what it meant to be a human changed radically. People moved from villages into towns. Things were no longer done by hand. They were done by machine. Things were no longer produced on a small scale. They were produced on a large scale, an unprecedented scale. And we are at a point, an inflection point in history, where there's a data revolution that's going on. And many of these same themes, these same experiences are happening. 
Now, you gathered in this room today are at the start of this. You know, we think we're into something big, but it's only the beginning of something bigger. There are many constituencies represented in this, this room today. So if data is your raw resource, data is your rocks, data is your crude oil, then people here are part of that ecosystem. Yesterday in the tutorials, we uh, heard from and learned from data scientists, the people who know how to craft data, extract value from it, turn it from a raw resource into products and services. And when you've got a resource, people want to trade it. You know, people want to refine it, combine it. People will buy and sell it. People will fight over data. We also hear this week from data marketplaces, you know, the buying and selling of data. And when data becomes a commodity, it has important effects. To own a unique database becomes more and more important. It's a point of control, a point of power. You probably saw that um, the discount shopping site Groupon recently received a large investment of about a million dollars. And the biggest investor in that round gave the reason, quite simply, is data. Owning a unique database is very important. Now, what we're doing with data science and big data isn't in itself necessarily something new. Walmart has been doing this for years. They're the masters at monitoring, at measuring, and optimizing, and analyzing. But they could afford to do it. They had the money. Now, the change that uh, is happening now, and part of the reason that we're together now, is that the means of extraction of the value from that data have become much, much cheaper. It's now economic. It was all to do with the same kind of things that uh, Walmart are doing. But there's one key thing. We don't all have Walmart's data. And so it's the data, not the tools, that are important. It's not just about commerce. The things that we're discovering with big data can be used in medicine. They can be used to protect human freedoms, democracy. We'll hear a lot this week about how uh, data is actually changing what it means to be a journalist, how stories are being uh, told through data. So I'm inspired by everybody that's in this room. As we put together the, uh, the conference, we've been encouraged, helped, supported by so many people. And there's a sense that uh, we're among something big right now whether it's you know, just in our tools, in the marketplaces, but it's part of something even bigger. In the same way that the uh, Industrial Revolution changed what it meant to be a human, the data revolution is changing what it means to be alive, to be part of society. I'm really grateful for everybody coming here, and I hope you have a good week this week. I want to hear about your visions, what the work you're doing is, what your hopes are. And uh, I hope you take inspiration and a lot of fun and pleasure from the people we've assembled this week. So thank you. Thanks, Ed. A um, couple more housekeeping notes. Uh, as you guys have probably heard, we've sold out this inaugural edition of Strata. Uh, thrilled about that, really excited. Um, and we've actually uh, announced that we're going to run a New York event uh, September 19th to 21st around the same stuff. So uh, hopefully, if you're watching online, you can join us on the East Coast. And if you really like your big data, you can fly east this time. Uh, the weather will be much better in September for New Yorkers that are trying to get this way.